This is the most dangerous image of all time. Hi, I'm Darone, this is Bad Media Studies, and this video is about why MKBHD is completely wrong about AI, and also why you should never use AI to stack TVs on top of each other. Let me explain. A recent MKBHD video covers a new AI model called Sora that promises to transform text prompts into startlingly realistic video clips. We see a woman walking down a glowing Tokyo street, some golden retriever puppies playing in the snow, and also this, a wall of vintage CRT TVs stacked on top of each other each screen flickering in and out with a seemingly patternless assortment of images. Somewhat curiously though, the scene lacks any particular viewer. We never see anyone watching these stacked TVs. But if not someone, perhaps there's still at least something that watches OpenAI's wall of TV screens. There is, after all, the camera. It almost feels like the one standing behind the camera, the one who curates our gaze and looks out into this vortex of flashing vision, is Sora itself. The prompt for the image describes the stack of TVs sitting inside a large New York museum gallery. It's difficult not to see in this image something of an artist looking back at a collection of their own creations, as if each TV screen retains the captured image of one of the AI's previously generated clips trapped in a frame of vintage plastic. We get the sense that the TVs aren't TVs at all, but mirrors. As digital code, the only way for Sora to see itself is to see the things that it has made. In the whirling procession of these AI-generated channels, the TVs provide a surface for Sora to witness its own excessive exuberance, its manifold and simultaneous creation of untold millions of images wrought across untold millions of computer and smartphone screens. But it's precisely this image of Sora overseeing a kaleidoscopic field of multiplying unstable images that seems to point to one of the ultimate underlying problems of AI. Marquez expresses the anxiety that AI video creation will threaten the jobs of creatives who make stock photos and video for a living. And that has all sorts of implications for the drone pilot that no longer needs to be hired, for all the photographers and videographers whose footage no longer needs to be licensed to show up in that ad that's being made. But the stakes here are really quite a bit higher. OpenAI's wall of TVs invokes the vague, unsettling nausea of staring into the pale glow of electronic screens for too many consecutive hours. It's an opaque surface of complete attention saturation. In his book After the Future, the philosopher Franco Berardi suggests that the power of censorship is trivial compared to the power of what he describes as constant chatter. Digital images, he argues, are produced and circulated with a speed that drowns out any time for thought, for reflection, for meaningful conversations between human beings. There's no need for censorship in an environment dominated by a vibrant superabundance of oversaturated images that make it impossible to sort what matters from what doesn't. AI models like Sora threaten an immediate and vast proliferation of this communication-destroying chatter. OpenAI's wall of TVs precisely represents this accelerating circulation of images that destabilizes our ability to make sense of the world. Marquez himself references the potential danger that an AI program like Sora poses during an election year in the United States. They can and will pass as real videos to people who are not looking for AI-generated videos. Now that is obviously insanely sketchy during an election year in the US. He assures us that it won't be possible to use Sora to simulate the likeness of political figures. He probably won't be able to make Will Smith eating spaghetti. Though one wonders how readily OpenAI would really be able to circumvent the intentions of bad actors. In any case, the problem of chatter isn't just a problem of false information, so much as a problem of the overwhelming volume of information. OpenAI's wall of TVs unintentionally provides the perfect image of the future that awaits us. As the TVs blink in and out, suddenly cutting back to and away from distinct streams of programs, the image captures the disruptive unease of a media space in which nothing ever actually finishes, but is instead actively and suddenly interrupted, violently switched off so that it can be anxiously and immediately replaced with the next fragment before it, too, will reach the same premature decapitation. We slide endlessly down the YouTube or TikTok rabbit hole, one fractured splinter at a time. Yet. This oversaturating chatter of exponentially increasing digital information inevitably encounters a limit. 
the limit of profitability. As Berardi writes, the brain is the market, and the brain is not limitless. It can't expand and accelerate indefinitely. When we can no longer process information, when exhaustion finally turns into complete collapse, the economic potential of AI finally ruptures entirely. To profit from human attention, we need human beings who can keep up with the multi-channel blitz of contemporary information. News broadcasts, social media, video games, YouTube, TikTok, live streaming, when too many of these things collapse, Lied with each other. When too many of them are forced to compete against each other at once, the bubble finally bursts. Berardi observes that while images are produced and circulated at growing speed, they still encounter the harsh obstacle of the human body. After enough pressure, the mind, as Berardi puts it, finally cracks. It's perhaps no wonder that the world now seems to persist under a progressively rushing fantasy to enhance the human brain with cybernetic augmentations that will make it possible for us to process information all the more efficiently and in ever-increasing quantities. The continually refreshed promise of each new computer computer chip, each new smartphone, tells us that we'll be able to do more, faster than ever before. Unlock experiences like nothing we've ever seen. The surgical intervention of Elon Musk's Neuralink, a computer chip directly grafted onto the human brain, advances the desire for technological optimization into forms that finally enter the barriers of the body. If the brain has become obsolete, then we'll learn to build better brains, brains more equipped to attend to multiple streams of information, each circulating at the speed of light, brains that can absorb more information, more images, more content, than ever before. Under the good fortune of such developments, maybe we'll finally build a brain that can watch OpenAI's wall of stacked televisions all at once. But the technologically and economically updated cyborg of such fantasies inevitably leaves us with a form of computerized thinking in which every thought must necessarily look like every other thought. AI is the ultimate machine of recombination. It takes whatever data it has been trained on and simply rearranges it in response to a particular prompt. We can again turn to AI's wall of televisions. The flickering screens offer the perfect image of an infinite recombination that never creates something new. Each screen gives us the uncanny feeling of something we've seen thousands of times before. Men with comb-overs wearing suits and ties speak while looking directly into the camera. It's appropriate that the TVs themselves look like something out of the 1950s, with boxy square shapes, striated speaker panels, and protruding dials to change the channel. AI is itself the suffocation of the future via the resurrection of the past. The 1950s becomes all there will ever be. By enacting a world in which text can become images or speech, or video, AI gestures towards the desire for a world in which all forms of information are ultimately homogenous. Anything can be turned into anything else. Anything can be frictionlessly plugged into anything else. But when all data is the same as all other data, it becomes impossible to introduce a difference, and thus to create something new. Instead of novelty, we end up with looping circuits of infinite sameness, a kind of reassemblage that never really changes anything. The Ferris wheel goes round and round, but never actually moves forward. Screens blink in and out, but continuously show us the same thing. Collectively, this incapacitation of change drives Berardi to advocate for the right of what he calls a non-polluted infosphere, the availability of media channels where it remains possible for human beings to listen and speak without facing the invasive, interrupting chatter of vast quantities of information that constantly paralyze the ability to think. Now past the event horizon of AI models like Sora, it's hard to imagine Imagine how we might preserve such a right. But the starting point must lie in seeing OpenAI's wall of TVs for what it is. Not just a promise of cheap labor, but the latest injection of a slow poison of overwhelming chatter. The techno-economic demand for more of everything. I don't know what the solution is, but it isn't yet another wall of screens.